Welcome to the BXG podcast, podcast where pop culture and nerd culture meet at the nexus of the universe and are melded as seamlessly as Nick Cage and massive talent. My name is Brent Beswick alongside my co-host, Greg Filson. Greg, how are you tonight? I'm doing well. I'm just uh, living life with my golden guns. Those are my golden guns indeed and uh you know just having a good time just came off seeing this movie honestly yesterday so i'm excited to mm-hmm. talk about it yeah how are you brennan i'm currently on acid <laughs> wtf <laughs> so we are we're convening uh a little bit late in the week but due to some you know arrangements that had to be made so that we could both see the movie we both kind of saw it a little bit later than usual and we're talking about the unbearable weight of massive talent starring Nicolas Cage as Nicolas Cage. So we've been excited about this for a, for a while. Yeah. Once we heard, say. once we heard about it, yeah, we were pretty stoked. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I guess let's just dive right in to sure. the movie. Uh, spoiler free. Your thoughts more than i wanted like in the in the best possible way like i wanted a a decent amount from this because it's nick cage and it felt like it was going to be a nick cage movie to some degree like that kind of idea and it was just so much more than that because of the storyline of where it's going to not to spoil it but just the way they built into making it a nick cage movie at the you know the last quarter of the movie or whatever you want to say um I thought that was really cool the way they did that. I thought everybody in this movie was excellent. Every single casting was just so perfect, especially Nick Cage as himself. Right. Was we'll, we'll kind of get into. Yeah. Um, and Pedro Pascal is just like, it's so funny because, you know, they always joke around like, oh, you know, he's sprung out of nowhere where after 20 years of acting, you know, one of those things mm-hmm. where he's been doing this forever, but now he's like a star. He's, and he's everywhere. And, and he's everywhere. But he's like, obviously he's not a young guy. Right. And so I thought he was really great. I, you know, I just thought every character, even the smaller characters were, were really good, really fit this movie really well. And the thing that I thought about is you don't really get movies like this anymore where <laughs> a, it was short. It was an hour and 47 minutes. Yeah. And that's, that was good. But also like, it just kept going. Like there wasn't, it was now 47 minutes that flew by and also just like i was never lost in the story like, like i didn't feel like i didn't feel like anything was unnecessary mm. and that's very rare like even when we were talking about a movie that was an hour and 30 minutes you know that yeah. windfall i was like <laughs> we could have taken 10 more minutes out of it and mm-hmm. i think it would have been better you know and this was a movie where every minute of this movie worked for me uh and it was and the other thing i'll say before i bounce back to you is I thought everything was just that right tempo, the right level of comedy, the right level of ridiculousness, the right level of, you know, just friendship, all these like weird little things and just the right level of like Nick Cage too, being Nick Cage. I thought all that, and even if that means things are tuned up, well, that's Nick Cage and that's those movies. So it might not be the same level as if this was another actor playing this, you know, playing themselves in a movie because, but this is, really held true to me but what did you think um yeah i mean i think that it's important to discuss what this movie is and what i mean by that is in terms of its genre uh this was a what i would refer to as a romantic action comedy Mm -hmm. and we'll get into things with spoilers but i think that the only there's only a handful of actors who could have pulled this off yeah. As far as basically playing themselves and I, off the top of my head, I really don't know. I say there's a handful of actors, but I don't know who any of the other candidates are. I really feel well, like. John Malkovich. Is, yeah, but that's like a, it's, it's a different thing altogether. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I think that for what this was, I feel feel like the only person who could have pulled her off was was the man himself and i do think that part of it is just the 
you know, we covered it, <clears throat> covered it last week when we did the life and times of Nicholas Cage, but like the mythology of him just as a person is right. what made this even remotely acceptable. If Leonardo DiCaprio did a movie where he starred as Leonardo DiCaprio, nobody would give a shit. Right. I mean, right. people would go see it, but it wouldn't be like anything like this. And I think that because of that, and we've talked a lot about where does where does he go from here and, and things of that nature, but I I really feel this like this was like a reawakening. You know what I mean? And it was yeah. the perfect ode to everything that he's done in the past to kind of bridge the gap towards the future, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I thought the perfect line, they said, you know, whether it was him talking to Nikki Cage or him talking to, you know, um, Neil Patrick, Patrick Harris, Harris, where yeah. it's like, you know, we're back, not that we went anywhere. Not that we went anywhere, right. You know, and I thought that was such a great line because it did feel like that. And, mm-hmm. but like, he never did. He Actually, if you look at his IMDb, he never went anywhere. Right, you right. may not have seen his movies, but it's like he right. never, and we talked about this too, and we just talked to him, and we, we've done our uh, Nikonaissance, and it's just like, it's funny to think like that, and for him to just, you know, early on in the movie, he talks about how he, you know, just likes working. Like, every, everybody right. else works nine to five and five days a week, and it's like, why is it different for him, and all these things. So I thought that was, there was like, obviously some real stuff built into this, mm-hmm. to whatever degree. It's not written by him, but it is produced right. by him. Right. And so, I thought that was just a really cool nod about all these things. You know, you don't know about the family dynamic or whatever beyond, yeah, that, but sure. you have to build that in to whatever yeah. degree. But I thought that just like I said, the building of this movie. But I, I we don't know who else could do this. I don't know, Johnny. Uh, Janie made a funny description. She thinks if Johnny Depp did now, Johnny Depp, mm-hmm. like doing a movie kind of making fun of this, but also it'd be gross and weird could yeah. probably do something like that as long as he was okay with that, but he might be okay with that. But I don't think there's enough actors out there that are self-deprecating enough that we know of because there has to be a thing where you're an Oscar winner and then you go and do the movies that he did right after, which are just bringing the money yeah. the plots or whatever, but they're awesome movies. And like, you know, there, there is what, you know, I've seen, I've seen the rock and I've seen, you know, Face um, off, face off, Harris. so many more times than I've seen leaving Las Vegas. Sure. I mean, there's just even though that's a great movie, it's just there's something about that, and you know, and I just thought that really, really worked. But you know, it's and a lot of other people did too. We're not this right. Is finally, where we <laughs> kind of all agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say, as you kind of reference the whole self-deprecating angle is i think a lot of people are like that but they're not necessarily stars per se right, right. you know what i mean Maybe because be i as big as he is yeah exactly and like a certified like m- like movie star leading man bringing in the bucks everything you said face off the rock national treasure all that stuff <coughs> excuse me there's probably there's probably guys who have shown, well, even John, Ma- even the John Malkovich thing, you know what I mean? Because John Malkovich is in all kinds of stuff. Mm. He's not, I mean, obviously he's Cyrus, the virus in Con Air, but right. he's not at that level. You he's know not what the I mean? main, he's never the, you know, Nick Cage is Nicholas Cage is in this movie. Pedro Pascal is very famous, but it's Nicholas Nick Cage, Cage in yeah. this Nick Cage in this movie. And then it shows the title for this movie. This is at the end. And then it shows everybody else. Yeah. So it's Nick Cage in this movie and then everyone else. Like that right. just tells you what he is. Not too many. No, there's actually not that many actors now that that still happens. You're sometimes double build. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of things like that. Like the gray man um, is coming out this year and it's, it's Chris Evans and it's Ryan Gosling and they're two major stars. And mm. yet it's, both of those names appear above and Nick Cage, right. honestly, he's earned it. He earns it. His name is the only name that shows up when it's the first name. Um, 87 tomato meter critical and audience. So that's over 218 reviews, critical 500 plus audience. Uh, unbelievable weight of massive talent presents Nicholas Cage and Pete Gonzo form. And he's matched by, Pedro Pascal's scene stealing performance. So let's get into the spoilers. Yeah. 
with as we kind of do things the cast i'm going to kind of go back to front on this there's there's some minor characters that we can kind of uh discuss there's uh ike Baronholtz who plays the uh fbi agent martin uh and then you also have the other fbi agent who plays kind of a bigger role vivian tiffany haddish so what did you think about those two kind of in particular in this? i mean i i like both their roles i like the argument of like her seeing a different movie seeing crudes too and then he's yeah. like, i saw con i'm 44 I'm, i saw con air i kind of wish like and it's one of those things where i can't believe but like i wish there was kind of more of him arguing with her about stuff like that right like, even like one more minute of that would have been really funny because he has a good freak out and stuff uh, like way of freaking yeah. out yeah just a look to his face that mm -hmm. really works for that I, you know, I thought they did what they were supposed to do. It was believable enough. Uh, I mean, obviously, like, you know, it's a Nick Cage movie, so you don't need these people to be super serious to do these right. roles. But when, you know, when there's the part where she's scared, she seems scared. And so she does this acting well enough. And then, you know, when he's out of the picture, you know, Ike Barron's out of the picture. He's out of the picture. I mean. Yeah, he's like done. He was, he's yeah. done. And so I thought they really did a really nice job of, not trying to overtake anything, almost playing th what they normally play, but just kind of muted it a little bit. Uh, this Tiffany Hash was still big. She's still yeah. big, but right. it was still muted just a little bit to make sure that, you know, you're not, you're in a movie with Nick Cage. You're never going to outshine Nick Cage. So don't try to in that way. It was, I would say between the argument scene regarding trying to nail down the best picture that represents nick nick's career uh the scene in which he was trying to uh with the usb or whatever oh yeah he's he's breaking into the compound and he's you know in the server room or, or what have you and he's got the thing that once you touch your eyebrow you just basically go numb or die or whatever and he's like oh, i think i th i think i touched my forehead and that whole situation and then them freaking out yeah, and i crazy. really thought that 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 scene as well kind of showed off his you know i i his good like as you said good freak out kind mm -hmm. of thing that's kind of what he was there for he served the role very well yeah uh and then as you said when he was no longer needed he was just kind of gone and that was right. fine uh let's talk about nick's family we had sharon Horgan as Olivia, his ex-wife, and then Lily, uh, Lily Sheen as his daughter Abby. I thought also really, you know, well cast. Good at, like level of annoyance, the good level of like, you know, you all, all you care about is yourself, which is that kind of tone throughout this movie, and being the ones that could take shots at Nick Cage, like the only people that actually in this movie that didn't like Nick Cage were his family, and you know, right. I don't mean to say it. You know they loved him but they didn't like him and it, right. it was sort of cool to have that um <laughs> motivation of that side of things is like the people you should care about liking you the most were the ones that didn't and they mm -hmm. did a really nice job not over the top i like to that that's another thing about this movie is yeah it was over the top and obviously certain moments but it wasn't just an over the top of like the daughter completely freaking out and like screaming at him and when he plays the piano and makes up that song about her and like you know in another movie she completely loses her mind and freaks out and it's a whole scene but it isn't yeah. that like she's upset with him but it's not this completely ridiculous thing that's just not even funny it was actually just well like <laughs> under the radar kind of freak out mad at him that whole yeah. thing so it was just i thought both of them really worked well and it was just that nice level of like i don't like you being around because all you care about is yourself while everybody else loves him because all he cares about is himself and making these movies uh i think just the right just the right amount of heartwarming mm -hmm. and just the right amount of like family strife that sort of thing again it, it served the plot it wasn't anything more than it needed to be and i think that you know in in your kind of opening description you, you know you said it was just as long just as long as or short as it needed to be. And I think that that could be said of a lot of these characters. They're just as much as they needed to be no more, no less. And that actually probably brings us to Richard Fink, Nick's agent played by 
Neil Patrick Harris. It was just a perfect Neil Patrick Harris role. It's this sidekick, you know, it's, it's Barney from, you know, it, yeah. and that's fine with me because I like, I like him uh, in, in certain roles. And when he's that sidekick, when he's someone that just kind of helps out, he just gives you that enough snarkiness, <laughs> enough of whatever, you know, we all know what Neil Patrick Harris does. If you watch how I met your mother, even one episode, you know, exactly what that character is that he's playing in a lot of things. Now he does play other characters in other movies, but this was like, that was him just basically being Barney from how I met your mother, but he was an agent. So just enough of that, not too much of it. This is like, I said, this is just what that movie, this movie did so well is I never felt like, you know, it would, like I said, maybe a minute more of just them arguing about movies or whatever, but we didn't need it. I would have still liked it, but we didn't need it. And it was just with Neil Patrick Harris, it was just enough of him commenting to Nick Cage about whatever it was, whatever the moment, you know, whether it was him losing his script or losing his, you know, not a script, losing uh, his shot at this movie that was going to change his life and all this stuff. It was just enough because yeah. even they cut him out. Like the, the, there's that phone call that drops because he's in the mountains because right. that conversation didn't need to go on anymore. They just really, really knew what they were doing when they did this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paco Leone, who plays Lucas Gutierrez, who ends up kind of being the, uh, the main antagonist of the film it's it's it leads you in a different direction obviously but yeah this guy ends up being kind of the the lead antagonist i just want to go out on a limb and say that i'm pretty sure kellogg's doesn't make fruit loops i think that's a general mills thing i don't, I don't know I, if that's I, accurate I, I, now i need to look it up i didn't even think about that i feel like they would have had to they do uh, make they make fruit loops do they? they? Make list. Yeah. Kellogg's. Very, it, Kellogg's yeah, okay. Kellogg's makes it. It's just a it's small just, logo. Yeah. In the, so big. In the movie, it was huge. It almost yeah. didn't even look like, and that's what kind of threw me off. It was like a princess uh, version of it, too. I remember yeah. saying like Princess Punch or something. But I, I, I thought he was, to me, he was that perfect villain in a Nick Cage movie. Over the top. He's his mm-hmm. hair is, you know. Bleach blonde, like ice blonde. Yeah, and he's like yeah. ridiculous. And it was, but it, once again, not too much of him. When you find right. out he is actually the villain, it's only that last. Literally, it's. I think it's like maybe the last fifteen minutes of the movie. Uh, really, where it really, yeah, really amps up when he really amps up. Yeah, I think that you do get like early. You get the sense that right. he's kind of this guy because he has that scene at the pool where he. He kind of like undresses him, you know, what, yeah. what's it like to be somebody who failed or whatever he says. And then Nick just steps off into the pool. Yeah. Uh, great scene. And I think that that kind of, there's, uh, there's a couple other minor, uh, Alessandra, um, Mastronati. Mastronati. And she plays. Gabriella, mm-hmm. who is kind of the assistant slash love interest of Pedro Pascal's character. Not a lot from her. No. Uh, I think that she's probably the most minor character who gets a significant amount of screen time. Right. Right. Uh, I mean, it served its purpose. Let's get into the the um the two main courses here. Pedro Pascal as Javi Gutierrez, the Nick Cage super fan to a borderline creepy level who has written a screenplay uh, that isn't very good and then undertakes the undertakes the role of of writing a screenplay with with Nick. So this being kind of the second main character of the film, what what were your takeaways from this from this character? It what he was awesome it was just one of those things where he's got such good energy mm-hmm. on the on the big screen you know we know from mandalorian what he brings and stuff like that but you don't see his face so much and mm-hmm. if there's just something about him like he's just he's got so much charisma and he really pulls off this thing i think like a lot of other actors that try to do this it's not necessarily believable and they don't they don't make it seem like but you really almost feel like pedro pascal and not necessarily this actor the guy he's playing in this movie is actually a huge nick cage fan and just mm. rolls off these lines like he does it so well like when he, he is 
when when Nick Cage is trying to go in that room because he thinks the girl that's been kidnapped is in this room, like he's so nervous about Nick Cage seeing that insane collection of things. And yes. you can feel it. Like it makes you almost a little nervous, even if, you know, even though you think it is maybe possibly that the girl's in there or whatever, it's just, it's when he actually comes in, you see everything and you're like, and he's so nervous about showing him everything. And he plays yeah. the nervous card, like really very really well, well, very well. Uh, Cause yes. he's nervous the entire time. It's every time they're trying to do anything, he, he still has the nerves. And when they have the freak out, when they're on ass and they see those two old guys sitting on the bench and yeah. it's just so good. And that's, I think my favorite scene with him was when they try to hop over the wall <laughs> and they're yeah. just, he's just yelling at him, gives him this whole speech. And then he just walks around. He's like, I guess we could have just, and then it's just like, that was so, and that's like that perfect level to me. That's, that's like old school, like silent movie kind of yeah. humor, which is just yeah. so perfect, which obviously like Nick Cage is a fan of those kind of things and appreciates cinema in that way. And it was like, that was just so perfect to me. He, luckily he is becoming a star and that's great because mm -hmm. he's awesome. And I yeah. think that well, well earned and well deserved. Like I said, this doesn't happen overnight unless overnight's 20 years and, and things right. like that. So he was great to me. He was really funny. Uh, he, he was such a good balance to Nick Cage too. And I thought that was, you felt like they were friends. You really felt like he was yeah. able to convince Nick Cage to be his friend. And that was awesome. And this is where I would say, <clears throat> you know, we said the romantic action comedy. I would say that the, that the first two acts of the movie were a romantic comedy. And it oh, was yeah. just that it was a, it was a bromance rather right. than you know a traditional romantic thing but the way that they meshed was just so perfect and and you know nick's here with his faux level of intensity and he's he matches that with like you said his his overall energy and what he brought to the role of just like like you said being very nervous being very like almost sheepish especially when mm -hmm. they go into that collection and the collection has like the sequin pillow. It's not just stuff. It's like the sequin pillow. And then obviously <clears throat> the statue with the golden guns with, you know, the whole line of how much did you pay for that? 8,000. Right. It's, it's grotesque. I'll give you 20, <laughs> you know, and that's like, so on brand for Nick Cage, obviously too, right. because he just right. buys shit. You know what I mean? So I thought that was, I thought I thought that the character was was awesome. I think that my favorite I think my favorite scene with him was just the whole collective scene of them being on LSD. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was part of, you know, part of that was the the wall thing, but them trying to drive, seeing these old guys. I love that they were constantly running and yeah. yet they were going so slow. Yeah, it like was never fast. Never. It was it was too, you know, I don't know how old Pedro Pascal is, but it was too like late middle-aged guys running. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, it was and it was like really exaggerated running too. Yeah. You know, yeah. like really flopping your arms around. Yes. And I think that's yes. what I really liked about that too, where you're just really getting into your running. So it makes you look right. like you're going fast, but you're 40, not uh 47 is how 47, old. yeah. Pedro Pascal's. So yeah, I mean, he was the perfect yin to Nick's yang, but the um the chef's kiss, Nick Cage as Nick Cage, as Nicky Cage. As Nicky Cage. Yeah. <laughs> all 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 parties involved. What did you think of his performance, not only as himself, but also as the you know, digitally de-aged younger version of himself as well. It was everything you wanted. It was it, right from that first scene where he's like, you want me to read? I'll read. Yeah. And he's like, I don't need you. And he just goes off and reads right at the Chateau Mormont in front of all these people looking on like, what is this guy doing? Just right. losing his mind. And like the idea of him with a stuff like terrible box of Boston accent. I might. Add. Yeah. Oh, awful. Box. Like slipping in and out of it too. Like yes. not good. And he's also not doing it. And it's just, and he's driving this Ferrari and it's like just that kind of stuff that you want him to be doing all his up levels. He spent $600,000 on his hotel stay and they're like, and he's like, but they love me there. They love having me there. And it's yeah. like, he just can't put this together. And you know, when he finally loses the movie, he's talking about retiring from acting 
and all these good things. And then you realize that maybe Nick Cage would do exactly this get a million dollars to go spend time with someone because he just needs this money to like yeah. pay off his debt. And it's, it's so perfect. And he what's what's funny to me too, is we had talked about where, you know, obviously he's a great, he's obviously a great actor. And there is like that part where he's just playing understated Nick Cage and being a good actor. And mm -hmm. then when the movie builds, so does he. Mm -hmm. And when Nicky Cage comes in, obviously that's great. You know, that, you know, oh, Nick, my love, uh, cage like that amazing thing and so it was just it was really everything that you wanted from him and even like a little more like because there i thought this movie was and i mean this in a positive way i thought this movie was gonna be way more ridiculous yeah and I it wasn't too. that ridiculous it actually right. was a movie <clears throat> with a actual plot line and moving and progressing to whatever degree and then when it needed to be nick cage going what we think of nick cage it was just chef's kiss Nick Cage smooch is good. <laughs> yeah, it was. I thought it was going to be far more ridiculous. And I don't want to say I was let down by how much it wasn't ridiculous, but I was waiting for it to just get more and more off the rails. I mean, yeah. if you really think about it, the ending is completely off the rails. Right. The last act is, is complete insanity. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> but it was so in a way that it was almost serious yep and it was a guy who's been in a bunch of movies who's played in a bunch of movies where he's the action star who comes in and and saves the day somehow against all odds mm -hmm. but it's the guy it's the, the actual human being the actor who plays that guy then doing that and that's kind of what made it even more ridiculous. And then he, you know, he gives that speech that is the same, the same thing that he read in the parking lot or whatever. What did you think of just, I will say this. What did you, what did you think of the overall action towards the end of the movie? Oh, it was awesome. I mean, it was so outlandish. Like the, that one truck barely hit something and it goes and it flipping flips. in the air. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, I love that. Cause it's just, I, I don't know if you watched Simpsons a lot as a kid and, and you know, but I the one thing I always remember about like Simpsons is like the ridiculous action scenes. Anytime they had like the, you know, uh, any sort of action thing, things would just go completely nuts. Uh, a horse carriage would fall off and it would explode. Right. Stuff like that, which sure. obviously, and this is what that reminded me of, of like that just completely over the top action, which is what you want in an action movie. But this, you know, it, for three quarters of it isn't even an action movie. But then when it is, it's just so much. It's like, I, I love the, I think my favorite action scene part of this was right before it all begins. And uh, Pedro Pascal and Nick Cage are talking to each other about, you know, oh, I want to run to the car first or whatever. And he's like, I'll yeah. run with you. And yeah. they're just like running together to it. And then they hop in the vehicle and they're just trying to get away. And it's just like you said, the, the running is so slow and ridiculous. <laughs> And it's even in slow motion too. And so they look even slower, yeah. which is so funny. And I thought that was just so well done. So I thought the action was, you know, when it, once it got there, it was just so over the top and fun. And mm -hmm. you just don't have that anymore. Like action movies are either action movies where it's an explosion every five minutes or everything is just bland and there's nothing. And yeah. when this happened, it was just, it was to me, it was really well done. Yeah. I think that a couple things, with this is that it paid an homage to his career in very right. in yeah. a very tasteful way and like they worked in different references to like con well the movie starting with con air mm -hmm. and i think that you know that that might be his most famous and eh, national treasure but they worked in enough references to like the wicker man thing and you know the bees the bees and you know all these other movies that he's been in i thought that that was really tastefully done but i also thought they they did a good job of taking shots at today's movies like oh, they yeah. talked about you know they they kind of threw a couple shots at marvel and and star wars and i almost kind of feel like the truck flipping was kind of a kind of a swipe at like fast and the furious or michael bay movies in general even though cage did some michael bay movies because the rock was a michael right. bay movie but <clears throat> i thought overall the action was 
it was it was good and it was just enough over the top but when you take it when you stop and think about the fact that this isn't him playing or like it's it's actually him mm -hmm. which is basically the same thing as you or me doing this right makes it even more over the top right it's like almost it's like meta you know what i mean it's there's like yeah, a meta well, to it the whole thing is that i mean like another reference the whole to thing's this is meta. adaptation is yeah. a movie he was in and that's a very meta movie so it's like yeah. even that is part of this like really this and like the writers of this movie just really did an incredible job of yeah. putting this all together but also none of it seemed out of place when right. they make the references either because a lot of times yeah. you can do something like this and it's just like we just threw that in there to throw that in there but it wasn't done like that it was right. anytime there was a reference to something it made sense it fit the storyline and it was just there enough like that's what i said like this movie just it, and it makes me it, like i hate it, i don't even it makes me like mad in a way because it's like everything we see anymore is just either like not enough or too much or cookie cutter it's all sequels. You know, there's no right. risks it's, being taken and like and to say that like a movie that just does everything right which i know that's hard to do i know i'm saying something completely insane but it's when you do things right and you you kind of maybe edit and you do a little things like that like you come out with something like this is, like i can't wait to rewatch this like i don't know if i'll necessarily see it in the theater again just we have mm -hmm. you know dr strange we have things just happening now and we have busy with what are you know our own stuff but like when this is like on tv when it's on yeah. hbo or whatever i'm gonna watch it just like i did with batman like i can't wait to watch it and and see it multiple times like this is feels like a nick cage movie you just throw in the collection and you're like oh, i need to watch this because a it's quick and b it's just really well done yeah, I think that that they painted a pretty clear target with this and they hit the bullseye with what yeah. they were going for. I don't think that there's any kind of it wasn't too much. And this could have easily been too much. Right. And they did a good job of showing some restraint towards that. And it was just enough of him being himself and just enough of him being like he said in the in the the gq article that we both read he gets it but he doesn't quite get it and that was kind of what made this perfect was because the whole time he you could tell he was in on the joke but he also doesn't necessarily understand what the joke is right and he i knows think this is a joke yeah right <laughs> it, but he he knows it's a joke he knows kind of where it comes from but he doesn't necessarily know how it got there or right. why it's a thing all he knows is that you know i'm i'm going to some guy's birthday party for a million dollars and then it just becomes so much more i i really felt like it nailed the humor it nailed the bromance the action was great you know towards towards the end of the movie and overall i just felt like like I said, they 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 gave themselves a target and they hit the bullseye, hundred percent. Is it a perfect movie? No. Is this no. an Academy Award winning movie? No. But it's no. Set, it it accomplishes what it set out to do with very few flaws. Right. That's that's perfectly said. That's exactly what I was saying. It's like yes, it's not an Academy Award movie. It doesn't have that kind of prestige, but it also isn't supposed to. Right. They didn't write this movie to win an Academy Award. They literally wrote this movie because they wanted people to watch a fun movie that we don't really see anymore. Right. That's and, why this movie was done. And <laughs> and and I think to pay tribute to yeah, yeah, and kind yep. of get him back. In this is the first national, like you know, worldwide big release, whatever yeah. big release that he's had in over a decade. Yep. So you know, it didn't do gangbusters at the box office i think that animated film won the box office bad guys or mm -hmm. whatever i think this came yeah. in third but they couldn't have spent a ton of money on this you know what i mean so no, like right. i'm i'm sure that whatever comes of this they're going to be happy and i think that he's going to be happy and i think that you know everybody involved is is going to be happy with how this turns out because even if all they bought was a little bit of goodwill for for nick cage the actual actor then i think it's mm -hmm. mission accomplished I also just when we talk about this with some other things this is a cult classic like this is one of those oh 100 you know yeah. this is one of those things like i said i'm gonna watch it a lot like i already know yeah. if, you know if i 
if I have a good long life, I bet I see this movie at least 30 times, you know, it's and gonna just, have, I think it'll have a nice, especially when, like you said, it goes to streaming. I think it's going to have a nice long tail to it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause there's going to be some people who just didn't see it in theaters for whatever reason. I mean, right. you know, th there is where it is and, but then they'll see it on HBO and it, it definitely will have this second run of, Oh, yeah. did you see this? Did you see this? And you know, it'll have a, it'll have a thing. It's definitely, like I said, it'll be a cult classic. People are going to, Definitely. gonna be writing about this 20 years from now about just what this kind of did because you know i think you know we know nick cage is gonna be doing more things yeah. and because no matter what no matter what whether this movie was big or small uh you know it's yeah he's, he's gonna continue to do things he's gonna keep working i will say just off the cuff because i do have his uh imdb page up um he already has one two three four four things in post-production so beautiful he's got two more movies coming out this year uh the retirement plan the old way he has a movie called butcher's crossing uh, oh yeah no, no release date on it there's it's still being kicked around whether or not he's going to play joe exotic in a tv thing and then the next big one is renfield yeah and there's already uh you know some images of him as dracula he's playing dracula uh ben schwartz is in the film aquafina uh nicholas holt some others that are you know some some name type people but yeah i mean he's 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 back on the come up and you know we're looking forward to seeing more of him oh yeah for sure yeah what Love would you it. rate this out of 10 a 9.5 like you said it's not a perfect movie but i think it's i i think for what it is too like i'm rating this for what it is and not you know because it like i my expectations were lower than what it ended up being i thought i'd walk away pretty happy about it, but like i walked away with a big smile on my face mm -hmm. and you know and so you know you, you can't rate movies equally right. either so for what this is like to me this is a 9.5 because it is almost every it's almost perfect as what this movie was supposed to be almost and you know i i loved every second of it and i wish more movies would try to do things not like try to make this movie but try to follow this path uh i think i'd give it an 8.5 um sure. just because i know you can't rate movies the same but i also can't in my mind give this the same score i gave the batman <laughs> I just say they're two completely different things, obviously. Right, right. But uh, you know, I I do think that this this movie had very few flaws on its ambition. It's a ten out of ten, right? Right. But, yeah. But for what it is as an actual movie, I give it an eight point five, just because I do think that you kind of have to have a little bit of knowledge of his backstory and his yeah. career to fully appreciate this. I think it's going right. to be fun. It's going to be fun regardless. But if you like know that Con Air, Face Off, National Treasure, Mandy, all these, you know, and then just the the insanity of, because like the, I'll give you 20,000 for a joke isn't really funny unless you know that this motherfucker bought three castles for no reason. Right. You know what I mean? And so like, it's funny, but it's not the whole way funny. Right. And so I think that, <clears throat> I think that that's maybe, I don't want to say that what makes it lose its luster because I, I obviously have that knowledge, but for the average person, okay. So this is what I'll say. If you have that knowledge of who Nick Cage is, what his career has been like, it's probably a 9.5, but if you don't, mm -hmm. then it's probably an 8.5. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I think it's just like I'm basing it on like I love Nick Cage, one of one of my favorite actors, you know, right. like and one of those people that just you know what you're getting into and you love it. Like that's and for like way different reasons. Like Christian Bale's one of my favorite actors, Nick Cage is one of my favorite actors, and they don't do similar movies. And it's just, you know, for the right. most part. And that's just kind of funny how that works. And yeah, that was to me, that was that was what made this so good to me. It was like knowing that knowledge and having that there. I think that the only other actor that right now off the top of my head could pull this off would be Keanu Reeves. He does kind of do that in certain things too. So it's just, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I, the only other person maybe I feel like could do it is Robert Downey Jr. too. I think Robert Downey Jr. could probably do something like this. I don't think it'd be as good with you. I'm not saying too. it would be as good. Yeah. I don't think it would be as good. I think Keanu is probably your best bet to match something with this, like to have something almost on this level. I don't think level. it would be as good. But I don't think, yeah, I still don't think it would be as good. I was just saying it could come yeah. close. Um, and then I would say Robert Downey Jr. And then it probably really drops off a cliff yeah. after that. Yeah. It's just the mythology of Nick Cage that, that really makes this work. Um, yeah. Is what I would say. Anything to kind of wrap wrap this up? Like I said, I think just, you know, just hit my point where I'm, talking, I'm just happy to see a movie that the people that wrote this movie, the people who produced this movie, decide they just wanted to make a movie to entertain people. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really cool. Not trying to be anything bigger than it was, you know, and it, you know, if it helps Nick Cage, you know, it didn't go anywhere anyhow. So it's like, he was going to do movies no matter what. And right. yeah, I, I think that was just for me, it was just one of those things like, it's just good to see like almost a good old fashioned movie, not yeah. trying to be a big blockbuster, not trying to be transcendental, not trying to tell a story, you know, we haven't heard before, but just a good old fashioned movie. Yeah. And I do think that, it, I, I mean, I certainly think that, that it has helped him. I mean, he got the GQ cover article. Yeah. He's been interviewed all over the place. He's doing, you know, the, like the AMAs and stuff like that. So, and, and this movie had a, like a legendary debut at South by Southwest. Right. Right. So I think in total, like I said, if all this movie does is, is kind of put him back on the map, then I think mission accomplished, but yeah, I mean, fun movie, probably call it classic. I think it has the one thing that every call it classic movie has to have, which is an off the rails drug scene. Yes. And, <laughs> and you know, it's, uh, I couldn't recommend it or more, uh, more, especially if you know who, like know what the story behind Nick Cage is, because then yeah. you'll just love it all the more. Right. Yeah. More Nick Cage is not a problem. No, no, nobody's. Nobody's going to have an issue with that. Yeah. So go um, see it for sure. Yeah, definitely see it. You know, support your local Nick Cage enthusiast as well. Uh, BXG podcast publishes every Friday and most Mondays, most Mondays. at 9 a.m. Eastern time, 6 a.m. Pacific, 4 a.m. Hawaiian. Aloha. On podcast services around the globe. Uh, you can check us out on our social media, facebook.com slash BHC podcast, Instagram at BHC podcast at. Wow. I just blanked. What am I on? Was I on Instagram? Yeah. I just, my brain quit functioning. <laughs> um, I just, uh, at BHC podcast at GT fills at Y2B. It's fucking dark in your neck, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at, at Twitter. Twitter at Twitter. Uh, <laughs> it like took me. Oh, all right. At 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 uh, on Twitter at BC Podcast at GC Filson at Y2B at our YouTube where this is, will be available also via uh, via video review. Uh, give us five stars. Like us. Yeah. Subscribe. Like. Ring the bell. Some may say I'm insufferable. I don't know, but. And I'm the I'm the I'm the villain of this podcast. So there yep, you go. I'm the one that's insufferable. <laughs> uh, but you know, we appreciate all feedback. But you know, yeah. leave kind reviews over on Apple and uh, yeah. five stars on Spotify. Take care, friends, and just remember, I am Nicholas. Fucking. Woo, Cage. Excellent. Thanks, everybody.